So if you follow up a group of people who've been diagnosed with schizophrenia or psychosis over a sort of 10 or 20 year period, you will find that the people who do best are the people who do not take long-term treatment. They might take treatment from time to time, but they're not the people who take it every day as is prescribed and recommended by guidelines. Now, that is partly probably because the people who avoid long-term treatment probably have milder conditions to begin with. And people who end up on long-term continuous treatment are probably the people with the more severe and more chronic conditions. But there's one study that's tried to control for the underlying condition, tried to look at some of the factors that predict chronicity and severity. And even when they've controlled for those factors, people are still doing better if they, if they avoid long-term continuous treatment. So, so those studies, they're called naturalistic studies, they can't definitely tell us whether people do better on long-term treatment or do better avoiding it because they, they are always confounded, the results are always confused by the underlying condition, the nature of the underlying condition. But they don't provide evidence that antipsychotic treatment is good for people or is, is the best option. That's why we need randomised control studies and we need to follow people up long term who've been in those randomised control studies. In all, because if you randomise people then you make sure that the people who take long term medication and the people who don't take long term medication are not systematically different in terms of the nature of their underlying condition. Long-term antipsychotic treatment causes this neurological problem called tardive dyskinesia and it's manifested as abnormal sort of little flickering movements usually in the face. Occasionally it can be more severe and affect the arms and limbs uh, and it's these abnormal movements that people can't control. And it's been shown that when people stop their antipsychotics, when they develop these symptoms, some people will continue to show the symptoms even though they've stopped the medication. So it seems that whatever's happened in the brain that causes these movements is, is permanent, is irreversible in, in some people. And the other important thing about tardive dyskinesia is that the abnormal movements are associated in some people with a degree of decline in cognitive performance and a degree of intellectual impairment that it's been shown in, in uh, a, a number of studies, a large number of studies, that uh, the abnormal movements are associated with cognitive impairment, and in one or two studies that the two develop together as people get the abnormal movements, you can show that they uh, show cognitive decline. All antipsychotics cause people to put on weight to some degree or another. Some antipsychotics, particularly olanzapine and clozapine, can cause people to put on a lot of weight. It's very dramatic, the weight gain that some people show on these drugs. And, uh, and, and the weight gain is due to the fact that the drugs are interfering with the metabolism of glucose and the metabolism of fats. So you can also show that these drugs interfere with glucose, normal glucose processing that happens in the body and the normal processing of fats. So there's good evidence that antipsychotics are associated with sudden cardiac death. So that is when someone drops down dead out of the blue and it's found subsequently at post-mortem that it was something to do with the heart. And antipsychotics increase your risk of dropping down dead out of the blue, I don't know how many times, but it's, yes, it's about five times um, overall uh, for, for a, a normal adult person. It's a very rare, dropping down dead like that is very rare, but it is less rare if you're taking antipsychotics. They are probably associated with increased rates of normal cardiac heart, um, normal ischemic heart disease and that may be to do with the 
with the fact that they, they make people put on weight. We're not quite sure about that. And there are other factors that contribute to the fact that people with psychosis and schizophrenia have very high rates of ischemic heart disease, like they smoke a lot, they don't get very much exercise, they're very, very sedentary. So, um, so the role of antipsychotics in ischemic heart diseases is less certain, but it, it's probable given what we know about their weight-inducing effects. Antipsychotics were first used and first um, presented as a treatment for people with psychosis and schizophrenia. So, you know, pretty severe um, conditions when people really sort of lose touch with reality. But more recently, they have been uh, tested out in, um, in, in depression, and so Seroquel quetiapine is now licensed for the treatment of depression that hasn't responded to other things. But antipsychotics have always been used for many things that they are not licensed for and have not been properly researched in. So they are given to people with insomnia, anxiety, depression, stress, all sorts of things. Usually at lower doses than they're given to people who have diagnoses of schizophrenia and psychosis, but they are nevertheless prescribed to people with other diagnoses.